back on the slat tips. And we got a little bit of plaster of Paris here. Got us a mixing bowl. And it doesn't take a whole lot for, for this. Let's, uh, it's gonna take a couple of coats probably. So let's just mix this up a little bit. I want. We're going to get one or two more coats of plaster on it, and they're going to be a real light coat. They're going to be almost a dip coat, possibly. Um, but this is about what it looks like. I've still got to do the other one. Now I've hurried this along, and I ended up, and of course it, this clogs your sandpaper really bad. It does a real nasty job on wet or dry. And since it's so hot out right now, what I've been doing is just going out to the sprinkler that's running in the backyard here, and working out a, a piece by the time it dries out while I've loaded another one and I can go and wash this one out and then I'll be able to use that one when I get ready to. So it, uh, it's not the easiest sand. It sands real easy but it clogs your paper real bad. So and I've hurried this along. I could have let it dry a little bit longer. So I'm going to get one or two more coats on and then I'm actually going to let it dry overnight and really get a good cure on it. But this is about the shape we're going to make both of them in. We'll match them up and uh, I've marked how deep they go in here. And I've got to do probably one more coat and just fill to get the to get the edges filled down inside. We've got a little clippy down in here, and and um, that looks pretty good. We may want to run that in just a little bit farther. But anyway, we'll uh, go ahead and make the other one up to match, and then we'll fill these one more time, and uh, one or two more times, and sand them out again. Let them dry. And we'll let them dry overnight, and then we'll come back to our final sand, and we can start prepping these for molds. Well, here's our tips. After they've gotten another coat, actually they've gotten two more coats of plaster, and this is basically dipped. I didn't, uh, you know, I mixed a thin coating on these. <coughs> Excuse me. I just mixed a real thin consistency plaster, and then I then I just dipped them basically. So they're still kind of lumpy and bumpy, but they filled in the the major voids we had. And we'll give us a, a pretty good surface, I think, to stand. I managed to get the back sides coated too to seal them, which was part of the intent. I wanted all of them sealed off pretty well. Um, so I'm just going to let these cure overnight. Got them on little sheet rock screw standoffs. And I'm just going to let them cure overnight. And tomorrow, after they're good and dry, why then we'll sand them out again. And, and hopefully that will be enough buildup on them that we can just sand them out and start seeing. Good morning, folks. I'm Dan. A couple of things going on today. I'm back out here working on the shop. And I'm going to continue working on my slat tips here, but I'm also going to release this video twice. And one of them I'm going to name as a Builder Basics because I uh, I want to I think this pertains to that, and I want to share a little bit there just as I kind of ramble on about some of this stuff. And it's one of the things I've talked about before, which is motivation to keep your project going and to, and to complete your project. Um, but I also, this is, this is the, 
pattern making for the slat tip so it'll be there. So this video will be released twice. If you have watched one of them, you're going to get the exact same content. It's not my intent just to add another video or try and try and boost the video numbers, but I think it pertains to both sections. So I want to, I want to uh, include in both places and kind of share my thoughts. I'm not sure there's enough of a builder basics here to do it all on its own about motivation because I talked about it before. So I just want to kind of ramble. I'm back working on the slat tips this morning. This is what I did in the, uh, I made it to, well, I made them both to this point in the first video, which was dipping them with uh, the last, hopefully the last coat of plaster. I am going to have one more little application of plaster, hopefully, to, to fill in these slots for my molds. But um, I'm just doing the final sanding on these, smoothing up the back, getting them, getting them ready to, to put a coat of sealer on so that I can go ahead and form the molds. And there'll be a uh, female mold off of these, and that's what I'm going to, and that's what I'm going to form my actual slat tip form for. A couple of different ways I could do this. I only need two of each of these. I could realistically, there's much a, such a small part, I could take and finish out smoothing these molds, and I could use these as a male mold, and I could, I could do a um, wingtip right over the top of these. I'm, and then I'd have to clear them on top and uh, kind of take into account the extra spacing and everything. So I'm just going to make them into a female mold. Good practice anyway. So I'm just going to finish sanding them up. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was motivation to continue working on your projects. And right now everybody's kind of shifting into to air show gear, gear or air show season. Oshkosh is coming up. We just finished Arlington here in Washington. So you go to these shows, or you get ready for these shows, and you um, you get all pumped up about it. You're motivated. You want to be building your airplane and everything. And that lasts for usually about a month until you've got the new toys you've ordered, whether it's electronics, tools, whatever the case may be. Why You're really motivated, and you're going to get this project moving along. And after about that first month passed, why you can drop back into the, into the same old grind of, do I really want to go and work on the airplane today? And it's hard to stay motivated sometimes, especially on a scratch building project where it takes so long anyway, that sometimes you just lose that motivation. And I've had a problem with motivation here lately. And the things that will get you motivated or keep you motivated is going to be different for each individual. Through the winter, of course, around here, it's cold enough out here that I don't get much work done. And it's hard to really do anything during the winter. So I kind of figure that. Spring hit, it was still kind of cold, didn't really want to do it. Well, now it's just hot as can be around here. We're pushing triple digits. And uh, it's really kind of too hot to work. And yesterday it was hot out here. But I accomplished a lot. And the thing that really got me motivated was something as simple as turning the plane sideways. Through the winter, why the airplane this last year was undercover and it was pretty well protected and when I got it out this spring and I hung the tail feathers on it why it uh, that in itself is a little bit of motivation I got a little bit of stuff done but really didn't get back into the into the groove of building until just the last couple of weeks and when my when I pull the fuselage out and I get the tail feathers back on it the little carriage that I've got it set on until I get wheels and tires under it is little four-wheel caster rack that I built basically or adapted and if I leave it sit outside out in the out in the yard or on the patio well on the patio especially on the pavers why if the wind starts blowing around here the plane wants to fly so it'll actually push it around so to stabilize it I end up and push the back two wheels of that cart back into the grass so the tails extending back out into the yard and that holds it in position enough to where I don't have any problems with worrying about it swinging around and hitting anything or doing any damage to anything. So I've had it set to where when I look out the shop door, why it's sideways to that. So I'm looking at the, at the side of the fuselage. And when I'm in the house, I look out off of the deck or out the back slider and I see the nose of the airplane. And Unfortunately, after doing it for so long, you can you can only make sure that your cabin structure and everything is level with the with your tail feathers. So many times it kind of becomes boring. So all I was looking at was nose on onto the airplane. Well, the other day I got to doing something and I moved it around so that it's facing into the shop. The nose is facing into the shop. So now when I look out out the out the back slider, out the kitchen window, or I'm on the deck, 
why what I look out and see is a side view of the airplane. And that for me has been a great motivational tool, just something as simple as that. And I didn't even realize it until I did it. But um, right now we're moving along. We're finishing up the slat tips. I will probably, well, I'll get these sealed and everything. And um, I may start forming the, I'll vacuum form the fiberglass for a mold over the top of this. I probably won't get that done today, but probably tomorrow I'll be very close to doing that if I don't have it already done by then. So we'll, uh, we'll get the molds for them for this and I've got to wait for carbon fiber and epoxy to come in. I've got that on order. Um, and I won't be in a big hurry. There's always something else I can be working on the airplane. But you've got to do whatever it takes just to stay motivated to get your projects done or keep your, pro your progress going on your project. Um, there's pretty much the first slat profile done. So I wonder how it fits here. Let's see how it fits in the end of the slat. First one ready, I'll get the I'll go ahead and fill the slot in the back and let it dry, sand it off, and we'll start sealing that, do a final sand and start sealing it on it. So that'll work well. You'll see an awful lot of projects that just get stalled out, that um, get started and don't don't get done. And you see a lot of it on the internet. Um, I've seen a couple of projects. I've seen one here just recently that unfortunately I think has been abandoned. Um, it had, the, the builder had a couple of, couple of starts. He changed right after he'd chosen one design and changed to a different design and began building and started, I think, I, I personally feel created his own problems. Um, he just wasn't, uh, he was more interested in finding fault with things that were going on with the plans rather than building an airplane. And as far as I'm concerned, the whole the whole um, idea of this is to ultimately have your own airplane. So I, I've kind of kept an eye out, and I hope I'm wrong, but I haven't seen any activity on the things that he's on photos and stuff that he's posted. And I unfortunately think that project's been abandoned. Um, you have to you have to find your own motivation. You have to find your own way. The aircraft company no matter what manufacturer you're building from if you're a plans building whether you're a kit building they're realistically your friend they're not your enemy and um, they're going to they want to see your process your plane proceed and be done too because it's in their best interest it doesn't do any good to have 15,000 plan sets or umpteen million kits sold and only have a very small portion of those completed so um, it's in the manufacturer's best interest to provide you with as much information as they can within reason to finish your project. Um, I think Zenith does a good job of that, but uh, you have to decide if the plane is going to be the right fit for you, if it's what you ultimately want to do, or if you're going to not complete your project and then find fault with everyone around you as to why your plane's not done. Um, nobody's going to do it for you and you've got to you've got to find your own way there so um, as you go along you just find whatever motivation it takes to do it um, like i say air show season is is something that it uh, will slow down build process process it will slow down build progress i believe just because everybody's in tune to that and i can get into that same mode to a certain degree just with what's going on you know you can spend all the time you want sitting in front of your computer planning what you're going to do or how you're going to do something um, but ultimately you just get in and start doing it right now i seem to be exceptionally motivated i've gotten an awful lot done here the last oh the last couple of weeks um, and it's not any completed project projects but it's stuff that's going along the way to get there um, working on working on the foam stuff uh, there again i just finished a new hot wire cutter and um, cut these forms and we still have to do the flapperons um, wing tips what else do we have any other little giddies, gizzies ultimately the cowl will be done in carbon fiber and I'm excited about that I'm gonna get a play with carbon fiber and see how that works out um, so I'm really excited about that what else do we have done I have had problems with the 
with the flapper runs and ultimately I, I shot some video of that I spent a couple more days working on that and that's one of the things that will drag you down too is when you're working on something and it just doesn't go right and for me the flapper on skins have been one of those things I went back and built new nose ribs for my flapper on which is fine and I'm happy with them but I'm still not happy with the skins that I cut so ultimately those are going to get redone and I've basically wasted several days doing that and I'm still not where it needs to be so that can slow down progress and that can be a, a real mental struggle sometimes to get those done um, so I've got to get new skins ordered for that and cut and we'll get those fitted and get those done eventually here so I've been dealing with those um, when I get into something like that why I'll switch gears there's always something else I can do so like I say we're working on slat tips um, I had the cabin frame I had painted when I originally installed it and since then I'd started powder coating and have powder coated all the landing gear fittings uh, all the inside controls or steel and that type of thing they've all been powder coated and they didn't really match the the cabin frame colors and I don't think it the cabin frame it was going to be as durable and hold up as well as uh, the stuff that I went back and powder coated so here last weekend I, I the cabin frame was all riveted in place. I drilled it out, pulled it out, sandblasted it, double checked my welds, and um, then I powder coated it red. Now, my powder coat oven is not really big enough to be to be baking it on there. I got it done. It's not perfect. It's back and installed, and I'm happy with it. So that's motivating for me too because I got a little bit more done, and, and I'm happy with that part. So sometimes you'll have a whole lot of things that aren't quite the way you want them, and, and that will build up against you too. So that's done. I'm happy with that. I can look at that and think, yep, there's more progress there. Um, the template for the windshield has been cut out. Uh, I've got the template for that. I've got to build some bucks to to uh, drape it over when we heat form that. And um, that will be happening here before too long. If anybody's got the dimensions, what uh, thickness flexiglass was used in your windshield? Uh, leave that in the comment section for me below. I see the recommended thickness for windows in the doors on my plans is 40 thousandths. Um, that's probably about what I'm going to use in my door windows. Um, there again I'm working on the on the bubble doors and the windows themselves and I've laid out patterns and molds for that. So those will be coming up here directly. My doors are going to be a I'm going to call them a hybrid door. They're not going to be a full bubble door although we're going to have bubble windows in them and um, I'm kind of laying out the design for those doors too that's uh, I'm happy with my layout of that too we'll see what we'll see how they come out framework for those doors are going to be kind of the same process as here think carbon fiber and I think that's going to be kind of cool so got an idea for the for the uh, springs to hold those doors open. I think maybe I've got a, an idea that might work for that and I'm still working on the latching system to do that. So those are all coming up. They're things that have motivated me exceptionally well and I'm excited to be working on the plane again. So hopefully this year we're going to finish up the airframe. There's some things that I have to do before fall like I want all my all my windows, windshield, that kind of stuff and most of my carbon fiber stuff done so that I don't have to deal with it in colder weather this year. I'd like that done so we'll have the airframe done. I've got to be finishing up the fifth bearing, which it's, I've made progress on that. We shot some video of that, but I don't have anything that I'm ready to release yet there. So things are moving forward. So hopefully I'm, hopefully I'm being inspiring to you today. So anyway, I'm moving forward with my project. I'm kind of excited about working on it. We're here in the heat of summer and uh, I am still pretty motivated so let's uh, see how much we can get done on this here directly and I'm going to be looking forward to Oshkosh next year hopefully but anyway any comments or suggestions leave them in the comment section for me below and if you like these videos you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you hit the bell notification you'll know when I put out a new video and as always thanks for taking the time to watch I guess we should show. Yeah. Wolf wing tips.